the Brother Richard X Podcast, coming to you live and direct. This is the first of many endeavors that we're moving forward with on becoming more economically sufficient for self. And what does that mean? That means we want to create our own entities and our own ways of generating income. And one of the best ways to do it nowadays is through the internet. So now this is why I'm trying my hand in the podcasting because, you know, I've been told I, I give good advice. I can talk real good. People like the sound of my voice. So why not? Why not? And, um, so what we're going to be doing with mine is I'm going to be actually important information, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, motivation, inspiration. That's the goal. We want to inspire those who need more inspiring and inspire those who are inspired. Why? Because in this world and day and age, most people are depressed with themselves. Most people don't want to be themselves. They want to be something else. So the internet actually gives people a fantasy to live vicariously through someone else. Isn't that interesting? So you follow certain celebrities, certain models, certain personalities, and you think you want to be that. Most people. Some people follow people because they just nosy. Some follow people because they want to hear what they have to say on certain things. What's trending, you know, things like that. But for the most part, I run into people with self-esteem issues. People that really have no identity of self, they follow the trends online. So we want to transition to um, actually following trends to the point where it's a detriment to ourselves and our dignity. We want to actually be um, inspired by those we follow to be ourselves, to know ourselves. What better way to do that than from someone just like you? So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk with about knowledge of self. Proper knowledge of self is knowledge of your history, knowledge of your family life, knowledge of your grandparents, your great great grandparents, going all the way back to the origin of life itself. So, do you know your origin? Do you know where you came from? And not just, you know, your grandma, or grandpa. I mean, can you go back hundreds of years and break down who you are? And what you came through most people can't especially black people because um due to slavery jim crow mass incarceration you know translating slave trade it's hard for most of us to actually try to go back that far so basically we're going to tone it back down to now you are of your origin you must find your origin to know who you are. And what is that in this world? This world of sport and play. This world of games and lies and tricks. Where's the truth in it all? How do you find the truth? Do you even want the truth? That's a big deal too. Do you want the truth? Do you want to really know who you are? Do you want to really better do you want better for yourself do you these are questions you you must these are questions you must ask for yourself because it comes to a point in time where um we get lost in our bad habits we get lost in our urges as you will you know, we um, urge and lust after things that are detrimental to us. The, the you know, the, the um, self-annihilating attitudes we have, whether it be chasing the money, chasing the scene, the nightlife, the fast life, 
And in chasing that, if it's not of ourselves, we lose ourselves. So, is what you're chasing or following adding to yourself? Does it hurt you more than it uplifts you? Do you suffer from following what you're following? These are questions you need to ask yourself and write them down. I've did it before myself. I actually, before I, I came this far in my life, I was um, chasing, you know, the party, the sex, the women, the nightlife. And it was to the point where I realized after a certain point that this is not getting me nowhere, but more trouble. This is not ending. This is won't end well. I need something better for myself. So I started to actually piece apart my life and what is the core of my life. And I just got parties and alcohol and sex and women. So how do I change that? What I did was I um I actually took upon myself to say, well, these things are the detriment to my life. I need to replace these with something that's going to add to my life. So I started searching. I started searching for something better because I wanted to leave something better for my son. So now I started reading up on men in history, Booker T. Washington, Malcolm X, Frederick, Frederick Douglass. These are the first books I ever bought in my adult life and actually started to, um, actually started to read those, right? And I used those type of men as a pattern for what I wanted to have my life become. And these are men of principle, uh, right? They're men of principle. You know, they have principles they live by. They didn't live by material. And the principle was to be a service to their own people in any way, shape, or form. Whether it be Frederick Douglass, who was an abolitionist, runaway slave, Booker T, who was a... Um, free slave as a child he was emancipated as a child and became the tuskegee institution where it was more geared towards teaching and training black people with a trade to know how to do for self handiwork mechanic work things of that nature self-help malcolm x was in the light of the resurrection of his people liberation of his people freedom, justice, equality, he became a teacher of his people. He became a minister of his people. And he became, they all three of them became fathers, husbands, noble men. And all their work was geared around helping their people. So for me, I said, okay, these people will live forever in the histories, in the books. I want to be a part of something like that. So I looked into the civil rights movement. I looked into Marcus Garvey. I looked into Martin Luther King. I looked into the red, the um, actual, how you put it, the insurrections of slaves, the revolts of slaves. And um, I came to the conclusion where me as a black man, I have to attach myself to something bigger than myself. So I took those things I've learned of old and realized who's doing it now in 2020. I started searching more then I came across 
Black Lives Matter popped up when Mike Brown got killed and I was, that woke me up all the way to the core because I saw myself and Mike Brown's father having his own son killed for nothing. I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to get involved. I was angry. But I didn't want to do nothing stupid because, you know, being stupid and alone, there ain't, ain't no effect on nothing. So, Black Lives Matter popped up, protests, injustice, you hear about racism, systematic oppression, and what the cops did and doing to us. I wanted to be a part of the solution. And I knew, you know, protest was getting the word out. We've done that. But what's the real solution for me to be a part of? What are we doing beyond that? Are we prepared for this war? So I started looking into um, these organizations, NAACP, Black Lives Matter, Urban League, the New Black the Panther Party, who's doing what's who's doing what now right because in order to fight a system you need a system so I was looking for a system and organization to join to fight against the system this again is going tying into motivation and transition to change because um, I was in that position where I needed something better than what I had. The standard of living I had was, it wasn't really going nowhere. It was the same old, same old. So, I came across a lot of organizations, but none of them had the moral foundation that I wanted. I didn't want to be ratchet anymore. I didn't want to chase the licking women anymore. I wanted to be a, a clean cut man for his people a good husband, a good father, a good brother. I didn't want to be running around no more. So most of the ones I found out, they didn't have those involved. So what I did was I went to um, look into other organizations, slowly and surely. I, I, one of my boys in New York, <clears throat> he sent me a fly to the minister speaking, speaking on the deaf. speaking on the death of Mike Brown right and that's all I needed when I heard that man speak I had someone in the 2000s to show me how it should be done and I got every book he mentioned I listened to almost every speech possible on YouTube thank you YouTube and I started to drink in the ideology of doing better for self. And the minister instilled in me love for self, knowledge of self, respect for the women, respect for the black women, respect for the black man, the black nation, to love for real, really love your people, to really help your people and he's been doing it for 60 years so um, the proof is in the pudding so I took it upon myself to go full force into what he had to offer because the product he had was so appealing the product of the nation of Islam was so appealing to me it was what I was looking for. To what? Make me better. To motivate me. To lift my self-esteem in myself. To actually give me a new lease on life. A new vision, a new purpose for living. You know? And that's what most people who chase these um, superficial things are looking for. Everybody's looking for something 
to be a part of, to be acceptable to. So for me, the nation of Islam is that in every way. Um, so fast forward two years later after when I, when I, I met the minister, I started listening to him in 2014, I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped chasing women, I stopped clubbing, I stopped partying, and I started buying books. Books. No bottles. Just books. <laughs> lots and lots of books because you can't do better unless you know better. You can't be the best you can be. You can't be the best you can be without proper knowledge. Without really knowing. The minister instilled that in me. And the inspiration and motivation he gave me to stand up for my people. I want to actually impart that to you. Because I know a lot of us, you know, we stuck on, we, we have sub, been subdued by life. We get stagnant in life. It just goes through the motions. And then every now and then something shakes it up. You know, there's still the police shootings of our brothers and sisters that shake it up a little bit. But on the mass level, we can't seem to all be on the same page every day. Every day. So I'm at about, what, the 16 minute mark? <laughs> 16 minute mark it is. So let me know what you think in the comments of my little story I told today. Leave your likes, dislikes, critiques, even topics. I would like to know what topics you would like me to discuss as well. Until we meet again and hear from me again. <laughs>